All right, we've reached the final lap of the honeycomb teardown, and we're just a few steps away from being ready to start rebuilding this robot and getting it back in the water. So I went through and I tested all the electronics on the control board that was flooded. The beagle bone that was on honeycomb still works. It still works fine. Even though this beagle bone was in the water for 18 months, it still worked just fine. So it probably didn't short out. What probably happened is the control board failed before the beagle bone failed, so it prevented any corrosion happening on board. Inside, the home plug connect still worked just fine too. So both of these components were perfectly fine. Unfortunately, however, the control board uh, did not survive. And I'm sure there's probably some component on this board that we can track down, swap out, and get this thing working again. But I'm going to sit this aside for another day, because as it just so happens, I have an extra OpenROV 2.7 brain. Uh, this is coming off of one of my OpenROVs that has been retired. This was actually the ROV that was diving at the same time as Honeycomb. And that particular robot had gone through about 400 dives by the time we decided it was better to put it up on the shelf than to keep it going. Also, of course, the new OpenROV 2.8s came out, so we had more advanced units to work with and more advanced units to build during the workshops. And so I already have a completely finished retired OpenROV 2.7 brain. There's no real reason to stress too much about getting these things back up and going. I'm just going to plug this brain into Honeycomb, which is hanging out up there, and get it going. Now, before we can do that, though, there's one last thing we need to check. We need to go through all of the wires in Honeycomb's wiring harness, and we need to make sure that there's no shorts in them. We need to make sure that there's still signal getting through. We need to make sure there's still power getting through. If there is a short, if there is some issue in the wiring harness, we don't want to fry the new brain. So we're going to go and do bit by bit using a multimeter and a couple little probes. We're going to check over Honeycomb's wiring harness and make sure everything is ready to rock. All right, so we've got a little bit of prep work to do here. The first thing I'm gonna do is prepare all these wires by trimming the ends and stripping them down so that we can then test the leads. So let's get to work. Now, this may look like total chaos to you, and it is a bit of a rat's nest. Uh, but all the wires are color-coded. Uh, they get color-coded to what they plug into. It's actually very easy to follow these wires around. And a lot of these wires, there's a lot of extra give in an ROV build so that you can go back later, strip them down, replace parts, and still have enough wire to work with. Okay, so there's two sets of wires that we haven't messed with. These are the auxiliary wires that come out and then you can add things like servos, like extra instruments, like extra cameras, and then control them from the ROV. These were sealed ahead of time. They've never been used on Honeycomb, and I'm just going to leave them sealed for now. Uh, if we start running into problems later, I might go back and chase these down. The other wires we're not going to mess with are the ones leading to the IMU, because there's no exposed part of these wires. They were potted inside uh, an epoxy housing before the dive, and the wires go all the way in through this bulkhead and then back out. So they should not have been inundated. So these should still be fine. If we run into problems, we might want to chase them down, but we don't want to add more problems in the system by cutting these and creating another joint that may be exposed to water. So I'm just gonna set these off to the side. And now we have the fun bit. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that all of these wires are getting a signal. Um, and in order to do that, we have to chase down the leads. Now I've made a nice little probe that goes into the DB25 uh, female end so that we can check with a multimeter and make sure there's still current going through them. Uh, and we are going to start with the tether. So, the tether is one, two, three, four. These four wires are for the uh, IMU. Pin number five, one, two, three, four, five. And I can see there's a lot of corrosion happening in there. One, two. So this might be a problem pin. So, get your multimeter set up. Set it to the 
contact setting. Make sure it works. Beeps on contact. There we go. We find the other end of these two. Now the tethers wires are yellow and blue, but they're actually both yellow when they connect with the connector. So that one's not the right one. Hopefully this one will be, 50-50 chance. Okay, so we're not getting any signal at the tether. And my guess is that's why I couldn't get the control board to go. So I'm going to clean this out a little bit. I'm going to poke around, see if we can't get a better contact. Nothing there. So we now know where our problem is. Uh, it's likely that that control board didn't start up because it was not getting the appropriate signal from the tether. So I think what we need to do is we need to swap out this entire DB25, which is not the most pleasant experience, but one that is certainly not too problematic. Let's clip these off. Now I can hear my buddies at OpenRV HQ screaming in agony because one of the big design improvements on the OpenRV 2.7 is that you didn't have to individually solder everything into the DB25. So now we do. Isn't that exciting? So we've got that off and stripped, but we still want to make sure there's signal going through the lines before we add a new connector. We don't want to put labor in if it's not going to yield any results. So we're going to go back to the drawing board and we're going to just test these ends for connectivity. Okay, I'm still not getting anything out of the tether, which makes me think there's damage deep in the tether. So I'm going to go ahead and take off all this extra stuff. Oh, that got a, that got some noise. Strip it down and test it again. So now it's just unbroken wire. That's got a signal. Good signal. Let's go on to the rest. So that's that. There's signals going to every wire. This robot is now ready for a rebuild. First step, adding a new DB25. So subscribe and follow along as we rebuild Honeycomb and get her back into the water.